Good God, Michael, is that you? There's no question about it. That's the person I saw in my vision. The person mentioned in the note I found in my house. What was his name? Hello, Chris. Come in, quickly. It's dangerous to be out on the streets at this hour. Michael, I'm so glad to see you again. After all that time without hearing from you, Sarah and I feared the worst. It's a long story, Chris. Very long. I'm all ears, old friend. And while I tell him everything I can remember, the few things in my memory since waking up in Rod's trailer, I see a mixture of tenderness and compassion on his face. Something I haven't seen in anyone else since waking up in this hellhole. I haven't the slightest doubt. I can trust this man. I'm sorry for everything that Beautiful happened, moment. Michael. Sarah and I had been trying to get in touch with you for a long time, but the great wave made it impossible to find you. Now I know why. As a matter of fact, she went out to take that note to your house. I haven't seen her since. Tell me, did you find Sarah? Did she tell you she was coming here? Sarah? I'm sorry, but I don't... I just found this handwritten note on the door. That's all. Of course, forgive me. You already told me that you were blanked. You don't remember her. Nope. Sarah is my wife. Emily and she were close friends. In fact, they ran the Beechwood Oracle bookstore together, right below your apartment. That's how you started working with us at The New Truth. And the two of you, Emily and you, became like family to us. Oh. I want you to know that what happened to Emily affected us deeply, Michael. Sarah was devastated. We could hardly bring ourselves to speak to you at the time. I'm so sorry for what happened to her. What the hell are you talking about? Good God. Don't tell me you don't remember that either. Emily died, Michael. <gasps> That's impossible. I'm sorry to be the How one impossible? to make you relive that hell. You yourself told Sarah and me on the phone a little while before you returned home. It happened while the two of you were in Japan, scarcely a few days before the great wave hit. At the paper, we sent you on an assignment to do a photo essay on those strange lights that had been sighted in the sky over Tokyo. So you got all your photography equipment together and set off right away. Emily went with you. You two decided to use the trip as a chance to work on your marriage, which had been in trouble for a long time. You were in bad shape, Michael. Your financial problems, her miscarriages, your Whoa. violent, self-destructive nature. Emily couldn't take it anymore. You were putting her through too much back then. Things are not going well between us, Michael. You know it's that. It's only a rough patch. You'll see. It's all your fault! You have to get on top of this, Michael. It's destroying both of us. I'm afraid of you! I can't help it. It's that demon. You know I can't help it! From what you told us, things were getting better. After so many years, both of you were starting to rediscover each other. Everything will be different. Remember that vacation we took to the beach? When we were getting to know each other? Everything will go back to the way it was. Uh, promise me. I promise. Until one night in your hotel, Emily started to feel sick. It all happened very fast. She was having fainting spells, vomiting, running a fever. You took her to the nearest hospital, where she was admitted immediately. Emily, what's happening? Emily, Emily! And a few hours later, they told you she was dead. Damn. They wouldn't Sadly, even let you see her body. They wouldn't let you see her. The Japanese authorities hustled you off on the next plane out. It was all very strange and disconcerting. And the very night you arrived, the great wave hit. Oh, Emily. Now I remember it. I remember everything. I remember her pale, haggard face when she took my hand. Don't worry. It's nothing. Everything will be all right, she was saying, while they were wheeling her deep into the hospital. And she waved goodbye to me, forcing a smile to cover her fear. And then I saw it. I swear I could see how time was stopping, little by little, in her eyes. Damn. That deep. Emily can't be dead. I... she talks to me. I've been hearing her voice for some time now. 
Nobody thinks she lies. I'm lost talking to you somehow. From the little we were able to talk to you before you got back, we could see that her death hit you terribly hard. I should, I should. You felt extremely guilty for the way you treated her those last As few you years. You said you would never be able to forgive yourself. It's possible that the pain warped your mind, mm -hmm. but it's also possible that what is happening to you is real. If Emily died before the Great Wave, how can what's happening to me be real? Let me tell you something. In spite of the catastrophe, at the new truth, we've never stopped working. For Sarah and for me, this newspaper is our life. And since the Great Wave, our contacts and confidential sources haven't stopped bringing us the most incredible and chilling information you could imagine. Thousands, no millions of unexplained phenomena are taking place simultaneously all over the world, Michael. We're living through the strangest and most confusing times in our history. And any hypothesis, no matter how crazy, must be taken into consideration, even what you just told me. There's no question that something extraordinary is happening all over the world because of the Great Wave, mm -hmm. the emergence of the Dissolved, and our gradual approach to the dead synchronicity. The game's title! I know this is a bunch of plot and stuff. And to be honest with you, I did a walkthrough, not a plot through. I'm sorry. I might edit it all out. Michael, please, bring me that report. And for the love of God, bring Sarah back to me safe and sound. I'll do it. Okay, Professor X wants us to go to the sewers. We can do that. And here we are at the sewers. There's a manhole. We use the crowbar on it because the crowbar is amazing. The crowbar, crowbar fits perfectly into the hole in the manhole cover. <sighs> The tool to solve so many problems. A crowbar. Everyone needs a crowbar in their life. Tell you, Gordon Freeman, he's made a career out of using a crowbar. You use a flashlight on the manhole. Here goes. I'll use the map Chris gave me as a guide. These tunnels are a real labyrinth. Yay. This is the place marked on the map. The place where Sarah and her confidential source were found. It, it, it don't look very positive what's going on here. It also looks like the subway's still working. Hmm, perhaps we should go over here. Subway looks nice. I mean, these sewers look nice. Look very rustic. Hmm, there's something with this waste heap here. We use the crowbar on the waste heap again, folks, because we gotta clear out some garbage to uncover something. Well, we'll find I think out. the crowbar won't be necessary for the moment. This first layer of trash can be removed by hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we use the crowbar. All right. Let's see what the devil's so tangled up in here. I guy just bends over. My God, Sarah! A bullet's torn off her jaw. Her face is still recognizable. Oof. Chris, I'm not gonna break this to him. Well, we grab the flash drive. Hmm. That depressant. Sarah dead. But we got a flash drive. If we just go ahead and give a flash drive to this gentleman, Mr. X, or Professor Hello, X, Chris. as I like to call Michael, him. Michael, you're back already? Tell team. me, did you find Sarah? Did you bring the report she went out to get? I brought the report. Here it is. Oh, that's great news. I knew you could do it. Ah, oh, damn it. I should have guessed. I was expecting a paper dossier, not an electronic document. Oh, dear. We have a serious problem, Michael. Problem? What's wrong? We're not in the old world anymore. And access to electricity is a privilege very few people have nowadays. The good news is that I was able to save my old laptop from the Great Wave. Yay! The bad news is that we don't have anywhere to plug it in. What can we do? If we want to find out the secrets in this report, we need electricity. Bring me a generator with enough fuel, and we'll find all the answers we need, Michael. But tell me, please, did you find Sarah? 
Hmm. Why didn't she come back with you? What happened? Should we lie or should we be honest? Honesty is the best policy. I'm gonna be honest with him. I'm sorry, Chris. Sarah's dead. Good God. But what? It looks like she and your confidential source were ambushed and shot by soldiers in the sewers. Mm -hmm. I found Sarah's body in one of the graded tunnels near the refugee camp. I took the report out of her hands, but I had to leave her there. Oh, my poor Sarah. She, she didn't deserve that. Please, Michael, don't leave her body to rot in the sewers. I beg of you. Do it for me, for Sarah, for Emily. I'll do what I can, Chris. I promise you. Now, get me that electric generator. Time is running His out. His mood changed very quickly there. Don't let my wife rot the sewer. Now, we should have given me that generator. Just in case she wasn't clear and he did it before. Hey, he dig through his shit, because he's sad now. We can steal some stuff from him. As one would expect, there are only old magazines, stacks of paper, and outdated printing supplies here. No, wait a minute. It looks like there's also film for instant cameras here. Yay! Film for instant cameras. That's exactly what we needed. Before leaving his house, I shoot a furtive glance at Chris. You tell in the eyes. He's gazing in Sarah's photo in silence, completely lost in thought. Maybe I should have lied about what happened. Oh, come on. Told him that she got away, leaving the report behind. That she's safe and sound. Well, he gonna believe waiting that? for the right moment to come back. The truth is a poisonous inheritance from the old world. Oh, my what God. What good does it do to know it if it snatches away your last hope? What? What? Leave that guy wondering forever? Jesus. Michael, you kind of crazy. All right. Instant camera film on the instant camera. Perfect. Now I can load the camera. Ah, oh, the tab that closes the film compartment is broken. I can't use it like this. I need something to hold it in place, or else the film will keep falling out. Oh no, what can we do? Well, believe it or not, our tooth fragment, where we found the flashlight, that's what we use. Pretty crazy, I huh? I can't believe it. The tooth fragment fits perfectly into the slot for the broken tab. Now I can close the film compartment. That's fucking crazy. Who would have thunk it? I mean, we can try to take some pictures now, but it ain't gonna work. Okay, here goes. Shit too dark. Damn it. It came out too dark, and the flash doesn't help much. You can hardly make out the depot. The photo is useless like this. I need more light. How are we gonna get more light, you ask? While well, we go down here, we go over here, and we use the flashlight on this dark room. Let's see what this room actually is, with a little light. <gasps> yeah, a button pressing room. All right. I'll flip the switch for the only circuit that's not blown. Hmm. I think I hear the buzz of electricity coming from the surface. Well, that is just a convenient button right there. Oh, look. Hit a button for all the fuel and shit. And I like how no one seems to care. Let's take a look. No one's gonna give a shit. Perfect. Well, hell yeah. We got a picture of the fuel now. So, hey, we're back here. We give it to the hunter. I've brought what we agreed. Here's the photograph of the fuel depot. Fantastic, Mike. Let's see what you've got there. This is incredible. Those pigs have been storing thousands of gallons of fuel. Oh, what do you and expect? All our reach. With your ID, all we have to do is go into the compound, say hello, boys, and bring it all back. Really? Is that easy? You've just made me very, very happy, dude. I knew I wasn't wrong about oh. you. We made a friend. Now you have to hold up your end of the bargain. You should be going now. I've got to get the trailer sorted okay. out. Give me a few minutes and then you can go there. Okay? Adios, dude. See ya, Hunter. I like the Hunter. He seems like a nice dude, really. Right. Have a good time, Hunter. They're doing all sorts of nice things for us. Wait a minute. What's that noise? Uh, Why is everyone fleeing? What's going on? There really isn't anyone around there. The cleanup brigades are coming. And they're heading for Rod's trailer. Oh, no! God damn it! The hunters turned them in! That animal turns Colin and his family in! No! He's not sick! It's a mistake! Don't take him away! It's all a misunderstanding! It's just a question of minutes before those bastards break into the trailer and take the boy. Well, in reality, there ain't no time or anything. It's a damn adventure game. We can lollygag all we want. But it's pretty easy. Out! Get out of here! For God's sake, leave us in peace. See, Rob's showing some emotion finally. 
or Rod. It's a weird name. Doesn't sound like a name. Sounds like a friggin' thing. Anywho, crowbar on the window. Okay, I've got to act fast. The noise the ambulance makes will cover the sound of the glass breaking. Hey! Now we inside? Yeah, now we inside. Damn, these are high ceilings in this trailer. Go in the cookie jar and grab the gun. Fuck yeah. Michael? Michael? Is that you? What? Yes, Colin. It's me. But how do you know my name? Emily told me a lot about you. That's how I know you. She gave me a message. She said it was very important that I give it to you. We're connected, and it's very important for you to remember that. Connected? What does that mean, Colin? Emily told me there was a thread that no one can see that joins us to you, and that's why there's still a chance we can be saved. We're connected? What does that mean? I don't understand anything. This is all crazy. Michael, help me. It hurts so much. Make it stop. Colin! What's happening? Make it stop! Uh oh. Please! Colin! That was pretty cool. Ah! It was pretty gross, but pretty cool. Oh my god, he dissolved it. My god. I have to get out of here. I have to get out of here. Hey, get out of our way and let us do our job. No, don't go in there. I beg of you. My son, my son. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Damn it. I can't breathe. If it's true that there's a way to change all this, I have to find it now. Yeah. I don't think I can stand it any longer. I don't think anyone can. Shit heavy, man. Shit is heavy. All right. All right. We're gonna solve some problems for everyone now. We a problem solving. Let's go solve some problems over here. Hey, take this gun, Rose, and be a peach and solve some puzzles. Hello, Mr. Sleepyhead. Have you come to help us? I don't know whether who I was before the great wave entitles me to make any kind of- You're a photographer. But what I do know is that the hunter and his men are a real cancer in this new world. Which is the only thing that really counts right now. The girl has a right to defend herself, that bastard said. So someone should give her the chance to do that. It's only fair, right? I can't get you out of here, Rose. I'm sorry. You're the only one that can do it. Thank you. As she was picking up the revolver, she gave me a look of determination that I didn't know she had in her. Rose acted so quickly that I barely saw what happened through the crack in the door of her van. Her hand was steady, even when the second man begged for his life, sobbing and groveling on the floor. The bullet went right through his heart. Blood splattered all over her white dress. And then she let the revolver drop and sat down, lost in her own world. And she didn't do or say anything else, holed up in her tiny, delirious inner landscape. There she had everything she could ever need, safe at last from the new world, which she will probably never return to. Shit is not going to end well for Rose. Wow. So Rosa, Rose got her vengeance. And here's what we have to do. Right. I highly recommend you save your game. Save the game. Save the game. Continue to save. And right here, there's some coins. You pick these damn coins up. They're important. And then you go nowhere else. I'm serious. You, you can't go anywhere else. I think this might be a fail state if you ain't careful. Okay, now we're back here at uh, Mike's apartment. We're going to use the coins on this beam. Let's see. The coins fit perfectly in the heads of the screws. It'll be no trouble loosening them and taking the fabric with me. We need this fabric. Because something's gonna happen, and it's pretty damn amazing. Now right, we're back here with Rose. Is I think I said was. Doesn't matter. But what does matter is a damn generator fucked up that we need. How the hell are we gonna fix this problem? No, the water turned the generator into an enormous hunk of scrap metal. Why would I want to take it with me in this condition? <gasps> we going back in time. 
Another one of those repeating images. Of those damn time loops. No. Rose. No, don't do it. No. It's Rose. Killing her captors again. But there's something in this one that makes it different. It feels more real and more intense than the other times. All right, we got to move quickly. Use photography backdrop on the generator. Right, 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 right. Then we... Fuck, we weren't quick enough. All right, covered both. Plastic bag and tarp. <sighs> yep. Better do that, otherwise you fucked. Hopefully you made another save. Okay. First, I'll unplug the cables that connected to the trailer. Sweet. We got a generator. Now we get the fuck out of here. We pretty much have beaten the game, folks. I brought the generator you need, Chris. Great, Michael. I knew you could do it. Give me a few minutes to set up the computer and open the report. While Chris was getting everything ready, I decided to sit down in one of the armchairs in the office. I was exhausted. And this is the end of the game, folks. I've been some guy before I was adventure. The rest of this plot and shit. Two hours of my life for what seemed like an eternity. The first hours following my bitter birth in this new yep. world. But how could I judge the new world if I could barely remember the old one? The only thing I was sure of was that we had lost something very valuable along the way. Mm. The photograph of our life overnight had turned into a dark, blurry, sepia tinted image. Oh dear. All of civilization had drowned under the great wave, and the only thing left on the beach were its remains. Damn. But no, I was fooling myself. I was already lost before the catastrophe. To tell the truth, all the other victims of the Great Wave have been luckier than me. They still dreamed of returning to their lives. Mine had already been broken a long time ago. Did I really stand a chance of recovering something I'd already lost forever? What type of strength, what type of miracle could ever give me that second chance? I don't know, buddy. Michael, wake up! He's done seen some shit, Bobby. What's happening? The report, Michael. It's the report. I was going over it while you were sleeping. It's incredible. It's way beyond our expectations. You're gonna think I've gone crazy, but I don't even know where to start. How about at the beginning? Okay. It's the dead synchronicity point. The entire universe is changing, and we're going to witness it. I'm cool. We're going to be witnesses. And victims. Uh oh. Witnesses? Victims? But what the hell are you talking Tell about? Not pleasant sound. What is this dead synchronicity point? Well, it's hard to explain. You're a photographer, so I'll try this analogy. Imagine a person's life chronicled in photographs. Up to now, and according to the rules that governed our universe, we were all subject to certain very specific temporal rules. Past, present, and future. That's all there was to it. So, the first thing we'd find would be a photo of the person as a newborn, then another on the person's sixth birthday, then another in college, and so on. Now everyone go college, then man! see photos of the person's wedding, children, old age, death. Oh. All in logical, linear, chronological order. Since our universe is conceived along a single line that starts in the past, makes a stopover in the present, and then projects into the future. Do you follow me? Yes, of course I follow you. Well, imagine now that this entire temporal architecture crumbles, falls apart, dissolves. Imagine that something or someone has altered the foundations of our universe, changing the rules of the that game, asshole. forever annihilating our idea of time. The concepts of past, present, and future. I think you just lost me, Chris. Yeah. Then let me continue with the metaphor of the photographs. Imagine now that a card dealer takes all these snapshots that sum up the life of this person, shuffles them, and places them in a stack in one spot on the card table. What would we have then? There would no longer be a chronological line, Michael. There would be no past, present, or future. 
each of the individual events captured in these photographs, they would all be happening simultaneously at the exact same point in time. Whoa. And that point we would call the dead synchronicity. Title of the game. Exactly. Now our world is abandoning its old physical Man, crazy world. And getting closer to that dead synchronicity point where time no longer exists. And therefore, all the phenomena and events that happened or will happen in the universe will start to be stacked on top of other ones, like the photographs in the dealer's deck. Oh, that sounds crazy. I wonder if people are developing. That sounds crazy. How credible do you think this report is? Completely, Michael. The dead synchronicity point is a fact. And the title of the game. And the worst thing is that we're approaching it faster and faster. Uh -oh. It'll only be a matter of days, at best maybe a few weeks, before the universe enters this new state. Time is ending in every well, sense. How the fuck can we stop this? And what does all this have to do with us? Come on, do you still not see no. it? This change in the architecture of the universe, this nullification of time, is the real origin of the great wave, the dissolved, and the emergence of the new world. What? The last time we spoke, you told me that there could be a solution. A way to reverse all this madness. Yes, and that's the best part of the report. Theoretically, Michael, and paradoxical as it may sound, our progress toward the dead synchronicity point also brings the opportunity to change things. To turn the process around and return to where we were before our world collapsed. And how would that be possible? By penetrating the very center of the anomaly the deepest nucleus of dead synchronicity and arriving at the point where time is just starting to fold back into itself before the process is completed. Whoa. If inside the dead synchronicity point, each and every one of the events that have happened or will happen in the universe unfold, then surely it must be possible to gain access to the moment when something or someone triggered the catastrophe and stop it. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You're talking about time travel. Hell yeah. Yes. I'm talking about the possibility of accessing the past to save our present and our future. Of turning the great wave and all its consequences into a mere nightmare that never actually happened. The report talks about the hypothetical existence of a door leading into the very heart of the dead synchronicity point. A door to each and every one of the snapshots of the past, present, and future of our universe. And if, through that door, we had a chance to access the precise instant when everything went haywire, then we might be able to change that things. That sounds fun. Michael, that's what we've got to focus on in whatever time we have left. But I have to continue studying this report. I'm sure there are more answers in it. And you have got to help me. All right. What the hell do the Dissolved have to do with all this? According to the report, the Dissolved are still a big mystery. There isn't much information about them or their disease. What we do know is that they are people who are especially... Of course. This transform is totally... In We're condemned to... That's terrible. If you think about it rationally, it's obvious. Of a great reach and what... I'll tell you. Our primary metabolism will go into a state that what we now call our body... Will dissolve. Indeed. According to the report, the dissolved are simply the vanguard of the human race. That's why some cases started cropping up so... And that will... So, the great wave was caused by this approach to the dead sea... Yes, Michael. That's why the it was the first, and it brought K. You're telling me that the dead synchronicity point is the origin of all this chaos? That our only chance of salvation is a theoretical journey to the past? Or sooner or later we'll all be obliterated? Like those poor dissolved? That's right, Michael. So we'd better get to work on it as soon as yeah. possible. By the way, the report also mentions another very interesting thing about the dissolved. What is it? It seems that in their trances, through their trips to the underground highways, the sick form a strange relationship with each other. It's as if the disease unites them, regardless of any physical distance that might separate them. The report is very unclear on this point, but it seems as if the dissolved are somehow linked, connected. My God. That can't be. Remember, please remember. Everything 
fits now. Everything makes sense. Please. Enough. My head. Emily asked me to tell you that we're connected, Michael. We're connected. Michael, what's going on? Chris, get one of those tests ready. Fast. But what for? You don't think that you're also. Do as I say. Okay. Give me your hand. I wouldn't be surprised. Positive. Dude's covered in so much blood. It's positive. Michael, you're sick. You're a dissolved. No. That can't be. No. No. Hey, mouth still ain't moving. Oh, shit. Plain dead synchronicity. Tomorrow comes day. I have been, and I've been some guy, and this has been my walkthrough of this game. Now, I edited out some stuff because I don't want to spoil it for people. And at the same time, now that you know how to play the game, how about you go out and buy it and play it for your damn self and hear all the other interesting bits of story and see all the other possibilities? I'm just showing you how to beat the damn game. And yeah, a really good game. Uh, Probably one of the better adventure games I've played in a while. Has its flaws. Michael kind of a... Meh. Kind of an asshole. Everything else pretty cool. Game has an interesting story. This second part sounds very interesting. The world's cool. The voice acting though is... Uh, yeah. Sorry. It's... It is what it is. Was passiert hier? Was ist das hier für ein Ort? Bitte, sag es mir. Bitte, Michael, wach auf. Wach auf. Diese Stille. Diese Dunkelheit. Wo bin ich? Verdammt. Ich kann... Ich, ich kann mich nicht erinnern. Oh my God, the voice actually is so much better in German. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.